In this encounter, you will be facing off against Garuda, Ifrit, Titan, and Ultima weapon in a no checkpoint boss gauntlet. To reach Ultima, you will have to awaken each primal before killing them. After killing each awakened primal, they will drop a buff called Beyond Limits, letting the carrier execute a limit break for free with a refill afterwards. The order we pick these up in is Healer, Caster, and Melee. Garuda's mechanics are as follows. Slipstream, Wicked Wheel, Mistral Song. Mistral Shriek, Aerial Blast, Friction, Miso High. Downburst, Featherane, Eye of the Storm. Garuda will start off by casting Slipstream on the main tank, then select a random healer for Mistral Song that we run through the party of the off tank in front. Make sure they pop a cooldown here. After avoiding the AoE left behind, we will position Garuda south facing east and prepare to AoE the incoming adds. The main tank will now be targeted for a Slipstream and the adds will appear all around the arena. The spiny plume will always spawn west, so make sure the off tank tags it when it spawns. While you deal with the adds, the main tank will get struck by a downburst, and the off tank will get pinged by the spiny plume for heavy auto attacks, applying one stack of thermal low each. Make sure the off tank has suffered two of these stacks before the plume dies. Garuda will eventually cast Feather Rain, which is signalled by a loud screech every time it's casted. She will then teleport back to the center of the arena and cast Mistral Shriek. Try to make sure the spiny plume dies relatively close to her position to aid of the next set of mechanics. When the spiny plume dies, a shield will be left behind that players can enter. It will reduce incoming wind damage and cleanse thermal low stacks, dealing raid-wide damage relative to how many stacks the player had. The party will stack tightly inside the border of the shield and the off tank will cleanse the stacks first. After that, the off tank will again leave the shield with two melee DPS or acting melee if the party only has one. Garuda will cast friction on a random player, after which the rest of the party will exit the shield and take a second friction. When the group is healthy, each melee will take their turn cleansing their stacks of thermal low, as each cleanse of two stacks at once will add a stack of awakening to the boss. When you're done with your thermal stacks, they should be looking something like this. Garuda will cast Feather Rain, teleport back to the middle again, and cast Aerial Blast. After a brief delay, Garuda will summon clones that will cast Feather Rain and teleport to a random cardinal each. The clones will target two non tanks for Mistral Song, while Garuda winds up Wicked Wheel and Eye of the Storm. The party will stack up southeast, and the tanks will intercept one Mistral Song each. The clones will then leave with a Feather Rain and reappear east and west. A tornado will be left in the wake of the tanks at the position in which they intercepted, so make sure to avoid them. After that, another set of adds will spawn and the clones will throw out a meso high tether that need to be grabbed by the off tank on east and a caster or physical ranged on west. Garuda will cast Eye of the Storm, then target the main tank for slipstream and then downburst. After the tethers have been resolved, the clones will leave and cast Feather Rain again. The last two stack cleanse from the off tank will awaken Garuda and this is usually where she dies on a clean pull. If she doesn't, the mechanics you have left are a slipstream, a wicked wheel followed by wicked tornado, which is an out then in mechanic, a downburst, 
another Slipstream, and finally in Rage. My name is Serenaya, and you can find me at twitch.tv slash Serenaya underscore Karen. Ifrit's mechanics are as follows. Incinerate. Vulcan Burst. Hellfire. Infernal Fetters. Crushing Flame. Searing Wind. Eruption. Crimson Cyclone. Radiant Plume. Ifrit spawns on a random cardinal and covers the entire arena in Radiant Plumes except for two cardinals and starts casting Crimson Cyclone. Quickly run to the one not covered by his dash. He then reappears in the middle of the arena and casts Hellfire. And then Vulcan Burst, tightly followed by Incinerate on the main thread. Ifrit spawns four nails in a tapered square formation and will be treating the tapered end as relative north. Ifrit will then select a healer for Searing Wind, which will make their way to relative south. Ifrit will also target the two farthest players that isn't in the Searing Wind for four eruptions each. These two players will bait the eruptions from relative southeast and southwest and make their way relative north while hitting both nails on either side with two eruptions each. Ifrit will also chain the off tank and a DPS together with Infernal Fetters. As each nail reaches two stacks from the eruptions, destroy them in the following order. Relative Southeast, Southwest, Northeast, Northwest. Just be careful not to kill them too quickly as each one inflicts a brief stacking vulnerability. It's important to remember the intercardinal with one of the last two nails since that will be the new Relative North for the next part. Ifrit will jump back to the center and use Hellfire. The tank will now pull Ifrit to the wall of the new Relative North, and Ifrit will select a healer for Searing Wind, which will make their way to Relative West. Ifrit will also select the two farthest non-Searing players for another set of four eruptions each. These players will start Relative Southeast, and make their way north along the wall. This section ends with Ifrit dashing across all cardinals. For this section, Ifrit will select the other healer for a Searing Wind, which will rotate clockwise, and cast Flaming Crush on a random non-healer. Ifrit will then disappear and reappear outside the arena in the same configuration as the nails we previously killed, dashing in the same order they went down. The first Searing Healer will join up with the party in front of the counterclockwise Ifrit clone, and the second healer will remain opposite to the party. Locate the clone that is engulfed in blue flames. Determine if it is on a cardinal or intercardinal. When Ifrit starts dashing, you want to run counterclockwise until you end up on a cardinal if the flaming clone was on a cardinal, or an intercardinal if the clone was on an intercardinal. After the dashes have resolved, Ifrit will use another incinerate on the main threat, and if you haven't killed him by then, he will throw out another four eruptions on the farthest player and finish off with a flaming crush before he enrages. My name is Lama Todd, and you can find me on twitch.tv slash Lama Todd. Titan's mechanics are as follows. Earth and Fury, Tumult, Rock Buster, and Mountain Buster. Upheaval, Granite Jail, Weight of the Land,
Geocrush, Bomb Boulder, and Landslide. Titan will begin by coming down with Geocrush and start casting Earth and Fury. After the raid wide, Titan will then target the main threat for Rockbuster and Mountain Buster, then throw out two sets of Weight of the Land on random targets. Titan will then turn and jump towards a random cardinal direction for Geocrush. You need to make it to the opposite cardinal and wait for him to come down. When Titan lands, he will spawn a pattern of bomb boulders opposite to his cardinal with a small safe spot inside. Titan will then wind up upheaval and you need to quickly determine which side of the hitbox arrow you need to shimmy to. After the knockback, Titan will select three players for Granite Jail that are not the main tank and quickly follow it up with a landslide. Please note that if anyone is dead, the main tank can be selected by a Jail. After the landslide, quickly line the Jails up from back to front. Titan will landslide again and a final bomb boulder will explode and detonate the line of Jails up to Titan. Some players may refer to this as a daisy chain. Now, some people like to bring an elegant melon or uh, a flatus misery to make this mechanic easier. I don't really understand what they have to do with it. I mean, by all accounts, it doesn't make sense. After the jails have exploded, Titan will use Tumult. After the Tumults, Titan will use Weight of the Land and follow up with a double landslide. Then get ready for another Geo Crush. Titan will now cast Granite Jail on a random healer, and you need to free them before the next double landslide. After that, Titan will use Tumult again, followed by another double tank buster. Following the buster, Titan will select random players for triple Weights of the Land, place bomb boulders in the middle, and execute a double landslide. The way we deal with this is by having the melee players in front of Titan and ranged players on the opposite side of the arena. Then dodge the weights counterclockwise, then clockwise, and then clockwise again. After that mess, Titan's going to use another double tank buster. Use a triple weight again on random players, cast tumults, and finally enrage. My name is Rin, and you can find me on twitch.tv slash rinkaragani. After killing Titan, proximity damage from the edges of the arena will go out and you'll enter the Beyond Limits phase, where you'll be speedrunning your way to Ultima using Limit Breaks. Start by using Caster Limit Break on the Magitek bits, Healer Limit Break on the Doom, Miller Limit Break on La Habrea, and Tank Limit Break the Ultima. If you're doing this in Party Finder, pick a Suppression Position here. Ultima will start off by casting his raid-wide called Tank Purge, then select the main threat for a Viscous Aetherplasm, a tank buster that can be shared by the party. Move this into the party after application for an easy share. Ultima will also select the second threat for an AoE tank buster called Homing Laser.
Ultima will then cast Ultimate Predation and disappear, leading into the first combo mechanic with the Primals. Garuda will appear in the middle towards a random Intercardinal, Ultima on a random Intercardinal, Ifrit on a random Intercardinal, and Titan on a random Cardinal. Garuda will execute her Awoken Wicked Wheel, Ifrit is Awoken Crimson Cyclone, Titan is Awoken Landslide, and Ultima a point blank AoE after a delay. To deal with this mechanic, simply go to any Cardinal away from Garuda that doesn't have Titan on it, wait for a Landslide to go off, and then quickly shimmy in any direction that doesn't have Ultima on it until you hit these runes on either side of the Cardinal. The mechanic ends with a Feather Rain. After Predation, Ultima will reappear in the center and the tank will pull him a few steps north to set up the next part. Both the caster and the ranged will head south to bait eruptions and slowly make their way towards the party. After a brief delay, Ifrit will place Radiant Plumes along the edge of the arena and Titan will appear on the Intercardinal furthest away from Ultima. Titan will then select a random player for a double landslide and place bomb boulders in the center. Ultima will also select a random player for a single landslide. Simply dodge towards the wall and then to whichever side Titan was on. Ifrit will also chain two people together with Infernal Fetters, but this mechanic might as well not exist since everyone is stacking together. After that, Titan will start channeling Tumult. The party will rotate counterclockwise and the main threat clockwise for a viscous aetherplasm application. Garuda will appear in the center and two clones will appear east and west. The off tank will then provoke the boss to bait an incoming homing laser on the now second threat. Mitigate both of these with an immunity. Garuda's clones will cast Wicked Wheel then Feather Rain. Garuda will cast Mistral Shriek and a Feather Rain again as the tank busters go off. Ultima will now cast Ultimate Annihilation and teleport north, with Garuda in the south, Ifrit on a random southern intercardinal, and Titan on whichever Ifrit did not appear on. The party will stack in front of Ultima's northwest foot and dodge east, then west, take a flaming crush stack, and this is where the party splits up. The ranged player or caster that didn't take the Mesolite tether during Garuda will move south and resolve the tether, then rotate counterclockwise around the arena behind Ultima. The healers will dodge west and wait to receive a searing wind. The healer that does not get one dodges a feather rain and joins the party behind Ultima. The searing healer will move to the south wall and prepare to dodge a crimson cyclone, landslides, and an eye of the storm. Move to whichever side if it was on after the dash, then dodge towards the middle to resolve the second tether. The phase ends with a feather rain and a tank purge, so keep yourself alive and stay in the back until searing resolves. Both tanks and one of the melee players will dodge to the east and soak a green orb that deals moderate damage. Then move to the east again for a Feather Rain bait. After the Feather Rain, they will take a second orb and head behind Ultima. One of the tanks will dodge clockwise around the arena when Ifrit dashes, then carefully shimmy in to take the last two orbs. The rest of the behind Ultima gang will now dodge counterclockwise around the arena when Ifrit dashes then into the arena just inside the Eye of the Storm to avoid the last two orbs. The phase ends with a Feather Rain and a Tank Purge. Ultima will then teleport to the middle. The next set of mechanics is a simple dance of in and out, tank posters and knockbacks. Ultima will start off with an Eye of the Storm, then Homing Laser, and another Eye of the Storm. Followed up by Radiant Plumes in the center, then Diffractive Laser, a frontal cone tank buster on the main threat. After that, another Eye of the Storm, Vulcan Burst, Homing Lasers, Eye of the Storm, Vulcan Burst, and finally, a Diffractive Laser. Stay shielded for the Vulcan Bursts and stay out of Ultima's face. Ultima will phase into Ultimate Suppression when you either run out of scripted mechanics or push it past 50% health. Ultimate Suppression will start off by the tanks lining up southwest and the non-tanks lining up along the northwest wall. Three non-tanks will be selected for eruptions, 
These players will make their way past the middle where they converge and keep moving towards southeast. One person will be locked in a jail and the other two will rotate north, dodge Featherings to the middle, then to the jail and start destroying it. Two of the other three non-tanks will get Mistral songs. They will need to head behind the tanks, then wait for the Featherings before they make it to the jail. The final non-tank will be selected for a light pillar. They can either move with the eruptions and loop around the arena counterclockwise, or go with the Mistral songs and loop around the arena clockwise after the Feather Rains. While this is going on, there is a deadly feather circling the arena which you cannot touch, and Ultima will throw out some laser line AoEs. After the jail has been destroyed, stack on the east marker and prepare to dodge south for landslides, then back in. The main tank will grab the final Measle High Tether and take it to the other side of the arena. The phase ends with a Flaming Crush, Feather Rain, and a Tank Purge. Ultima will teleport back to the center and start casting Ultima. Mitigate this with another tank limit break. The tanks will now stack together southwest, and the rest of the party southeast. Ultima will knock everyone back and spawn orbs that need to be soaked before they move together and connect. Both parties will rotate north and take the second set. Soaking a set deals massive share damage, and the distance between the orbs is decided by the amount of people that share the Annihilation orbs. The more people that share the orbs also decides how short Ultima's enrage is, so that's why we use this very specific amount of people. Ultima's final phase is Primal Roulette. Ultima will inflict Viscous Aetherplasm on three random players, then summon each Primal in a semi-random order. One Aetherplasm will expire before each Primal executes a raid-wide, so be ready to mitigate and heal. Garuda will spawn in the middle, execute Wicked Wheel, then Wicked Tornado. One Aetherplasm will explode as you dodge in for the Tornado. Garuda will then cast Aerial Blast, then disappear with a Feather Rain. Ifrit will appear outside two Cardinals and wind up Crimson Cyclone, making all Cardinals unsafe. Ifrit will also select two random players for a single eruption. Bait the eruptions north and bucket northwest for this Crimson Cyclone dodge. One Aetherplasm will explode after the dash. Ifrit will execute Hellfire, then leave the arena. Titan will select random players for three weights of the land. Dodge from north to northwest, then back and forth between those two. One Aetherplasm will expire after the second dodge. Titan will end his phase with an Earth and Fury. The order the primals can appear in is as follows. Garuda Ifrit Titan Titan Ifrit Garuda Ifrit Garuda Titan It's important to keep the party healthy and mitigated at the end of each primal phase, and always return north after each primal, unless the next primal is Garuda. After the roulette, Ultima will start charging his enrage. When he reaches 100% Aether, Ultima will execute you one by one, with the player dealing the least damage going first. Congratulations on your clear, and I'll see you in the next one.